1971 446 barrel four-speed shaker hood CUDA is almost back to life. The drivetrain is ready to assemble and install, as is the interior of the car. The rest of the parts are all here. With the final stages of the paint just about finished, this car will be on the road in no time. This time on Graveyard Cars, Will cuts and buffs the fabled Phantom Cuda. Despite her best efforts to help, Alyssa gets hazed. Dave begins working on his own restoration, while Mark and the ghouls take a field trip to check out some long forgotten chargers and debate if they're even worth restoring. Coming up on this episode of Graveyard Cars. to get you, Barbara. It has been established that the unburied dead are coming back to life. I'm Mark Warman, and together we bring dead muscle cars back to life, to exactly the way they were on the day they were born. Will's getting ready to do the uh, wet sand and buffing on our 71 Phantom Cuda, the EV2. Give me orange. If it was a Dodge, it's a Plymouth. Tour red. Tour red. Tour red. You don't. Say I was getting ready to say. I know you were. You probably meant to say it the first time. Anywho. Orange. It's the orange car. Uh, he's gonna long block it with 800, which sounds aggressive. But that's what you do when you want to get a panel perfectly flat. Once he does that, he'll massage it out, go into 1,000 grit, 1,500, 2,000, and then 3,000, and ultimately he'll start buffing on it. Uh, these peaks, I know you've done them before, but these peaks, they love to burn. They, they do. They can't wait to burn. Their, their whole thought in life is, I want to burn and leave no paint there. And that's going to be a hard one to spot in. Yeah. Make sure everything's clean, dry, and ready to go. Well aware. Make sure there's no <laughs> flop. What have you done? I, I, it wasn't my fault. What have you done? <laughs> leave him You've alone. You've killed the fly. I'll leave it alone. I'm not happy Mark saw the fly because I wanted to get the whole cut and buff done without him even knowing about it because he'll make a scene about it. He'll post it on Facebook, on Instagram. So I'm sure I'll hear about this for quite some time. Why would you do this? Okay, in my, when I walked out, it wasn't here. I come back in and the thing... Is it the last coat? It's on the last coat of clear. When I painted, I got the same thing. You can't control everything. All you gotta do is walk out here into the shop one time and back in while you're waiting for flash coats and a bug can get in there. Yeah, fly killing... Anyway, I would recommend maybe cutting him out with a razor blade. I can take care you of it. You don't say that to a lot of the painters around town. Be sure you cut all the bugs out with is a razor that my, blade. How is that my fault? It's happened to me a hundred times. You get a bug, you get a mosquito, an insect or something. In this case, you got a, a little baby fly. You want to kill a little baby fly. But it'll cut right out. I'm good to go buffing. I think he signed off on it. I think he just likes to come out here and be silly, but it really didn't need to be signed off on that it was time to cut and buff. He's happy with it, so I can go ahead and get started on it. Meanwhile, Dave has brought in an engine for his own restoration. This engine's for my uh, 1970 Dodge Dart Swinger. Uh, it's the original, uh, an FC7 car, uh, Plum Crazy Purple, uh, white bumblebee stripe with uh, black vinyl top and black guts. Uh, this one here I'm gonna do all original. So it's, you know, it's an original 344 speed car. I don't have the actual numbers matching motor. Still trying to locate it. I got some uh, rumors of where it might be located. This is a date coded uh, 1973 40 that I bought with the car. I got an A33, A body four speed transmission, bell housing and everything. I went ahead and went through the motor. The cylinder bores were almost perfect on it. I just line honed it, re-ringed it, put new rods and main bearings in it. I'm really excited about starting it up. I'm hoping, you know, everything goes well. You know, it got that anticipation, you know, and inside, you know, and nervousness and everything else. So I'm excited about running it. I just, you know, hope everything goes well. While Dave gets the engine unloaded, Will and Alyssa join forces to extract the fly from the clear coat. Hopefully, it won't require a repaint. Uh, we're ready right now. I got Alyssa in here. We got the room prepped. It's 100% sterile. We're ready to head over there and make our cuts, but got to get the gloves on first. All right. Make this look a lot easier on TV. You got to pull down. You got the right size? Put it in the con. What? <laughs> Alyssa's out here helping me. It's kind of a technical thing. She wants to be a part of it, so we're kind of working together to see if we can get the fly out. So this is what you're going to grab the corpse with. You got to okay. be very careful not to smash them. So that'll be yours. This is the razor blade we're going to use to make nice cuts. Um, it's kind of a delicate procedure. You know, the fly has to be held onto just right. It's like an oven in here. 
It's not even that hot. It's freezing outside. Well, I just mean the way it feels. So we're going to head in right now and get that body cut off and start sanding on the legs. A little bit stressed out. All you gotta do is grab it. I'm gonna kind of flick it off so you can get in there. Okay. Uh. <laughs> ah. <laughs> no, put them on the rack. Ooh. We're good. Didn't have too many problems. Alyssa was a little jittery with the pliers around the I was stressed starship. out. It was a delicate procedure. It was. It was. But she handled it like a champ. We made nice, clean cuts. Had no problem removing the fly. So here's the fly. So now we're going to tilt the car down and start sanding out the legs. It should come out just fine. It's in the last coat of clear. What happens if you go past the clear? Then that's repainting the car. Oh my gosh. OK. Does this happen a lot in body shops? With like the fly situation? I Maybe don't know. I've only, I've only worked for your dad. So, so I mean, is this something that you think other painters are going to run into? Probably. Or? Yeah. Probably. It just sucks that it's on TV. All right, we're good. That looks pretty good. Yeah, you can't see it. No. Like, it never happened. That's right, it never happened. Operation Take Out the Fly is complete. Thanks. It was yeah. fun. <laughs> Thank you. Let's work together again sometime, yeah? Soon. With the fly out and the Kuda's paint job saved, Will checks in on Dave. Doing your motor? Yeah, yeah, I brought my motor in. What are you yeah. doing with it? Uh, I'm going to throw it on the engine run stand. Hopefully, it was in between motors, so I figured this would be a good time to bring it down, get it on the run stand, and keep my fingers crossed everything works good, and then get it stripped down and get it over to you and see if you can. What color? Shoot some hemi orange on it. Oh, yeah, I know. I know, fun. foam crazy hey, purple car. Uh, it would look motor. pretty cool having a purple motor in there. Yeah, Will seems excited. Uh, um, you know, I'm happy that he's going to paint it for me and stuff and, and willing to help me out. Oh, it's awesome that Dave brought his motor in here. Um, I'm looking forward to helping him paint it, moving it right along here. Not too happy about the Hemi Orange, because every motor we do is Hemi Orange, but I'm still working on them. I, I do want to paint it the body of the car. I think that would look pretty cool, having a plum crazy car with a plum crazy motor. Uh, Will wants to paint the motor, try and talk me into painting the motor plum crazy purple because my car is FC7, but uh, that's not going to happen. Sorry, Will. What's yeah, on it now? Uh, it's like some etching primer, just rattle can stuff. It had some bare metal on the valve covers. They were raw steel and stuff, so I just kind of. So we could probably just break clean the whole thing and just have it. A... Exactly. So is it yeah. safe to say because you built this motor, it's going to fire off on the first start? Yeah, I hope so. Because no, so. if this fires <laughs> off on the first start, Mark's doesn't. Yeah. Yeah, that would look really good. So. That would look yeah, really good, wouldn't it? Really nice. So. <laughs> I think it's great that uh, actually an employee here has a Mopar. I don't have one. I got a Volkswagen. Uh, Mike has nothing. Ryan's got box. Nova something. Mark has that 69 green charger, but we all know, you know he's going to end up selling that. So this is the first time an employee here actually has a car that's going to run through the shop. So I'm pretty excited to be a part of it. With the engine unloaded, Dave cleans up and waits until the engine run stand is available to hook up his engine for its first start. All right, so a few days back, I had a gentleman give me a call uh, out of the blue, said he had some chargers that were setting up on some property up near Seattle. Talked a little bit about it, he fired me off some pictures. Uh, they're overgrown, they look like they've been in a swamp most of their life, which is kind of a cool picture, but not so cool if you're wanting to restore a car. He says, there are a couple of chargers, I've talked to the property owners, they'll sell them. He doesn't expect them to be very much money. This cool. is the fun part of the job. We're up bright and early and ready to hit the road. I average about 180, 190 on the freeway. I average about 80 or 90 on the freeway when we're out there on the freeway. It's closer. So you should be able to get there, uh, get there in about four, four and a half hours. Yeah, it's gonna be kind of a long drive with Mark, but I think I'm up for it. Meanwhile, Dave continues work on the 72 Dodge Charger. As you can see, there's no fan in here, no fan shroud. Uh, we got this aftermarket really cool aluminum radiator. So when we run a setup like this, uh, a lot of guys want to run electric fans, and that's what our owner wanted to do. So we had mounted our electric fans uh, right to the front of the radiator. So I went ahead and got a really cool wiring harness for our electric fans and got some relays in here. I kind of ta tapped it in to our original uh, wiring system, so it kind of blends in, kind of looks uh, OE or factory, uh, even though it's, it's not, of course, but okay. Uh, you might want to ask, you know, uh, why would I want to run an electric fan, you know, set up in uh, the, the whole reason to run an electric fan setup is with the manual fan, 
kind of robs a little bit of horsepower because you got that fan turning on the actual engine. So to gain a little bit of horsepower, a lot of these guys remove the manual fan, uh, go with a system like this, and uh, run an electric fan setup uh, for a couple of reasons. One, to gain horsepower, of course, and for one, a little better cooling properties. Uh, if you do a lot of cruising, uh, you know, run the strip or whatnot, and your car's idling a lot, a lot of times these electric fans, they work great. You can get them in all different sizes and varieties to really pull and move a lot of air. So it's really cool having that. So all you're using is a little bit of battery power rather than robbing some horsepower from your engine of that extra setup pulling that fan around. So uh, this works really good in these high performance applications. So the way these fans are operated on a temperature switch, uh, the temperature switch is mounted right here. It has these two leads on it, goes right into the water jacket there of the engine, uh, really close to our normal standard, you know, uh, temperature sending unit, which is, you know, of course, mounted to our gauge on our dash. But this one is actually runs to these relays. So when this uh, particular setup runs, hits 185 degrees, that thing will ground out in a sense, and it'll kick the fans on. So, it's a little tech tip for you. Mark and Royal arrive in Tacoma to check out the heavily wooded Charger graveyard. Mike is there with a the rollback, just in case these cars are worth salvaging. Jim Pfeiffer, nice to Jim, meet you. Nice My nice son, to Kyle. Meet you. Kyle. Kyle, how are you? Chet. Chet, nice to meet you. Chester. Chester? Yep. Good name. I like Chester. Well. I'm sorry. It's a destination where the cars are, so we're pretty excited to see them, see what they are. Again, I'm, I don't really expect them to be much more than what they look like in the pictures, but, you know, a Vin's worth a thousand words, as they say. I kind of coined that phrase, so Vin's mm -hmm. worth a, like a picture's worth a thousand. Mark Twain said that, but he's been overquoted, so. You ready to see him? Why don't you enjoy the moment? Why do you always have to ruin it? Like, let's go down there, let's get it done, let's get back. What do you have to do no, back in town? See. You have nothing to do. Let's it's see a vacation. Him. Let's see them. You don't take vacations. <sighs> Looks like we're gonna go down and take a look at the cars now. So that's exciting. No, nope. wouldn't want to upset your apple cart. Thanks, buddy. Back at the shop, Will begins to buff the Phantom Cuda. Hey! <laughs> hey, what are you doing? Uh, Buffin Phantom. Can I help? I've tried to sand with her. It didn't work. And that was on a car that was heading to paint, so you have a little room for air. This car's in its final paint, so the sanding on it, there's no room for air. The buffing on it, there's no room for air. Nope. No, no. There's uh, nothing I can help you with? Um, unless it's coffee or haircuts, I think I'm good. Really? You don't have enough experience to really get there. Oh, well, I know. Okay. I know, but I thought maybe you could show me. No. Okay. Dave, he lets well, me help him. That, that's okay. This is just more technical. There's just no room for air. Okay. Um, if you buff it and burn it, you know, I have to repaint it. Um, this buff weighs like 100 pounds. I doubt you could lift it. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think, I think I'm pretty good. But Do you mind if it. I hang out and watch? Yeah, well, this is kind of like a sterile environment. So unless you have like a suit on of some sort, you really can't come out here. But it's okay, you didn't know. So there's really nothing she will ever be able to do in this department, but if I can give her that little bit of hope, to kind of make her just jump through hoop after hoop after hoop, to where she finally gets everything done that I need done out of her, she's gonna come in here, be ready to go. Mm, guess what, I'm done for the day. So to come through those doors, you at least have to be in a fully furnished white paint suit. And it has to be white. And I want maybe a shower cap or something. Oh my God. I, we can't, we can't have hair floating around in here. So you make all those things happen, then you can come out here and then we can talk. Okay. But until then, okay. it's just not going to work, Fine. my friend. I'm going to try to Thank make it you, happen. Though. Okay. I'll be back with a coffee and a suit. <laughs> you do that. She's an idiot. <laughs> and Alyssa wants to come out, and I think it's cute. You know, she's like a little kid sister to me. So these are the types of little games I like to play with her, but I definitely appreciate her, her coming out to help her. Do you think she's going to catch on? I don't think she's going to catch on. She's not the brightest bulb on the strand, if you know what I mean. Um, I, well, she's around the corner. I don't think she's gonna catch on. She's not really that sharp, but um, I'm gonna push it as far as I can. Love you, Alyssa. <laughs> oh, wow. wow. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. look yeah. pretty rare, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> when I walked around the corner, my first impression was, wow, they've been there a while. So uh, to see them like that's pretty cool. I mean. I hate to see anything set that long and rot that bad, but you know, it's... I almost like the picture and the setting more than I do the idea of bringing oh, them back and cleaning them up. Yeah, 
it which was, is sinful. I'm probably as bad as the other guys out there. But I mean, that's almost yeah. artwork. Yeah, picturesque. Do you want me to lift this up and look under here? Yeah, let me see what's under there. That's cool. Yeah, it, it oh, was wow, running last it's got year. got a motor, look at that. An engine, sorry, people don't like it if I... Thermal quad intake manifold, so it's after 1972, probably. Graveyard Cars is is my, my favorite show. I, I just think the whole idea and, and rebuilding the old Mopars, and I've got a few of them myself, and, and so I enjoy watching the show. Yeah. I, I enjoy it because he keeps things all stocked, brings them back to life like they were original. Mm -hmm. Back when I was a kid, and enjoy that. I think he knows a little too much, though. He gets a little, <laughs> you know, he knows every yeah. nut and bolt, which is maybe says something. For example, the Daytona Charger in 69 uses a factory 69 wheel opening molding, but it's extended about six inches. Wheel opening molding car, left hand outside remote mirror. That doesn't look like it's going to open. See, both seats are out of about a 73 B body. Has the Flintstone floors in it. They've been on my property here for about 20, 22 years here. I got them from my brother. It came with another car that we had, 68 Charger. He wanted them moved over onto my property, so we moved them over with a tractor onto our, our property. <laughs> You're the reason the front bumper has no, 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 no. All that was that way. That. Oh yeah, yeah, it was that way. But really nice people. Uh, interesting story behind them. There really isn't anything magical. They just kind of got passed from one set of hands to another set of hands. I think forgotten about. And it's funny because time will fly, and you hear that, but it's true. When he parked those there 22 years ago, over two decades ago, I doubt very much he thought they'd be here now. A very well-deserving trip. Uh, these cars have been rotten and decaying into the ground for years. It's sad to see that, and yeah, it's a shame, but at the same time, it happens. And because it happens, there's lots of this stuff still probably out there on parcels of land and acres and behind people's houses. Whether they become cars or whether they become parts to make cars whole again, they'll go to the right reasons and the right causes. After deciding these chargers should be saved, Mike leads the volunteers in exhuming the corpses and loading them up for the trip back home. I'm just glad that our job is done because I wouldn't want to stay here and do that with Mike. You're going to leave everybody <laughs> by yourself? I leave here with the camera guys, the little Nancy fingers out here that are holding the cameras, these guys right here that aren't used to working and being in the trenches. I did my time, all right? Me too. I did two tours, all right? I was in the jungle, all right, dragging these things out. My whole youth I spent in the jungle dragging these things out, so let them do it. They're white-eyed and bushy-tailed, let them go at it. You know, first one of them's gonna get poison oak because it's all over the place. Another one's probably gonna get bit by a snake. It's everywhere, too. Snake is everywhere. Snake is everywhere. What's buddy? Uh, just buffing away. Starting to do a little buffing on her. It's coming out good, yeah. actually. Yeah. Looks sharp. Are you okay, Mary? You need me to go get you anything? This thing is heavy. Yeah, I know it is. It's heavy. I see that one thing, man. Yeah, there we go. Reminds me of the old day. I used to do like nunchucks with it and stuff. He's gonna whip that buffer around, hit the side of the car, and put a dent in it. Then that means I gotta turn around and repaint it. And yet it'll still be my fault for some reason. Can we not do that next to the freshly okay. painted car? Yeah. Devil went down to Welby's. He was looking for a car to buff. He was in a bind. He was way behind. And he was looking to make a deal. Come across this young guy buffing on a car and buffing a hot. Devil jumped up in the middle of the hood and said, boy, let me tell you what. Mm -hmm. This is why I come in at 4.35 o'clock in the morning. I get most of my work done before he even walks through those doors. Go-kart Mozart, you know him, checking out the weather chart, seeing if it was safe outside. Little early burly came alias curly whirly, and he asked me if I needed a ride. So what was the point of you coming out here? The Goliope crashed to the ground. You heading back to the office? Revved up like a deuce, 32 Ford. You heading back to the up front? Let me know if you need a, uh, a relief, a relief buffer. Oh, s A relief buffer is when you can no longer move any for more at all, okay? I'm gonna need an injured reserve list. Your name will need to be on it. I just want Will to have the pressures I have. So I go in there and I wind him up sometimes just to make sure that he's not too calm and relaxed. If you ever watch him, he's a cool cat, man. Everything's cool about him, right? Every cool hair, cool jeans. 
when he walks, it's like he's got rocking chairs on the bottom of his leg, like this. So it just... I mean, that's cool, man. Don't let the Goliope, that's the Cuda in this case, crash to the ground. OK. So I'm going to get back to buffing now. I won't see him the rest of the day now. That was his little two-minute show that he does. My buddy Mike made it back all the way from uh, Tacoma, Washington. Yeah. How tough was it to load them? That's what I want to know. They were almost impossible. <laughs> There's a lot of good DNA on this car, a lot of good stuff that you <laughs> as, know every day. As we're I was loading up, it. I was thinking the same exact thing. It's, it's it's just lots of so stuff. much stuff and so much reference material. So, at the very least, it has that to offer. But again, I think until. The thing is, is, Charger shells are hard. That's first generation, second generation Charger 687. That's a hard car to come up with. You can go on eBay and they're selling those things for 10 grand and all you get, everything shipped to you in a flat rate box, right? <laughs> for, it's, there's nothing there. So I don't think it's bad. I want to get it cleaned up as best you can inside now. If you can get the doors to open on it, and let's do an inventory sheet on it. And then we'll put these in inventory. And we don't know until it gets cleaned up. If they are plausible to restore, somebody may want to order a Daytona, you know, tribute yeah. car someday. That's what just we're like doing. Right. Yeah. So. Yep, there it is. Bumper and fell got, off on the way home. he stole the taillights out of it. That's cool. Yep. And the bumper fell out. Oh, the bumper fell literally the fell off. Right. OK. So it was, I'm assuming it was being held in place by the license plate wiring. Right. The taillight wiring and the license plate wiring. Isn't that a pretty color, though, B7? Yeah, I'm sure. My one time it was gorgeous. You could put some pieces in that necklace and save it. Like another mm, win? No, no, <laughs> yeah. Get them cleaned up. Let me know when everything's cleaned. I don't want any dirt out here on my parking lot. You know how I am. So once they're cleaned up, I want you to sweep it down. And then put everything away. Get get Adam to help you. I'll let you know when it's done. Tell Adam to paint the building next door, and he'll immediately start cleaning the cars. Not a bad idea, I suppose. Bang! While Mike and Adam clean up the Chargers, Ryan makes progress with the metalwork on the record-holding 1969 Charger General Lee. Our General Lee has already received its used donor front end. That is completed, it's done, it's welded off, it's metal finished. So from a standpoint of structurally speaking, that's done. We can now move to the back part of the car. Now, again, on this car, doing the big fly through the air and coming down, hitting that front corner the way it did, we've taken care of all the immediate damage, the initial damage that you could see visually with your eyes. You already know from the other ones you've done, we're gonna do full quarters all the way up to here. All right. The remnants of the outer wheelhouses, I want you to drill out all those spot welds through this quarter inner structure, just like we're getting ready to install the new pieces on it. I want you to go around, cut, trim, clean. So I think if you go around it, <clears throat> this side's synonymous. Sorry, I don't like to use big words. This side's the same as the other side. So if you go through there, you can uh, just treat this side exactly the same way. OK. I've got everything pretty much down. I mean, I'm still learning. I don't want to sound like I know everything, because I'm far from that. You're learning something new every day. All right. Well, with that, I'm going to go back up to my, uh, to my office and take care of some business. I'm going to start across this back panel here, removing this off of here. And then I'm going to go down through here and use the plasma cutter and trim this out slowly on both sides, kind of drop this apart from it. And then I'm going to jack it up and finish out the cut down through here, and then I'm gonna start prying this apart from this back panel to put the new frame rail sections in. It should go pretty fast. You're ready to weld? I'm ready to weld. Beautiful. 
right now he is all finished tacking everything in place. They've already pre-fit everything. So they're just gonna go through there and begin welding, plug welding all the original holes that were once spot welds. After that, when they put the new pan on, then they can go to full spot welding. So your green light go, everything fits good. Solid. Good job, great job. Thank you. It's the guys right there, make it happen. The guys behind the scenes, they don't get none of the glory. They're doing all the hard work. I'm just making it look like it's me. Good job, guys. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. you bet. Dave continues work on the headlights for the 1972 Dodge Charger. Right here, we got our 1972 Dodge Charger SE, 400 Magnum four-speed car, one of 126 ever built, which is really cool. What we're, we're working on right now is the flip-up headlights. So we got our headlight doors on here, and then you got your headlights mounted behind it, just like you normally would in a front fender. It's pretty easy uh, to work on. There's not a whole lot of components. This whole headlight and bumper assemblies and, and doors all goes in in one unit, which is really cool. If you kind of look in here, uh, your headlight door mounts on these pivots in here. It's got some nylon bushings. Uh, this one in particular has a return spring. So if, you're, if your headlight doors do fail, they, you can actually wind them up and they'll spring up if you undo the rod and stay in the open position uh, so you won't be stuck out on the road you know, with no headlights. This rod right here runs across from this headlight door all the way through your motor. Your motor's right here, runs back out and goes into this headlight door. And the headlight door's got the pivots here, and then there's another pivot on the inside that you can't see, and that door flips up and down uh, by a relay mounted underneath of the dash of the car. So you have to have your key on to activate that relay. When you pull your headlights on, the doors flip up, headlights are on, really cool. Shut your headlights off, the relay flips, allows your doors to flip shut. So just really cool, unique setup. You know, not a lot of cars had them. What do you say, we give them a shot and we'll pull them on and watch them go up and down. So our key's in the on position. So we'll just pull our headlights open here. Oh, and there they go, flip right up. Go ahead and shut our headlights off. And down they go. If you turn on just your parking lights, parking lights will be on, no headlight doors, all the way on. That's just gotta be the coolest thing around. I love it. So you kind of look at them and ours have got a little bit of play in them. It's not a little bad, but it's got little stoppers on there and stuff that you have to adjust. It's got rubber bumpers so they don't clank really bad when they open up. Uh, but we'll adjust uh, and try to get them as, as perfectly straight as we possibly can. But uh, it's so cool. This is, this is the best. This is Mopar or no car. Wow, whoa, 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 stop, stop. Remember, you, you can't come back in here like that. It's not sanitary. I know that Will says that that's like a sanitary environment and everybody needs to be clean that enters, but like I look at him and what he's wearing and his shoes and stuff and it doesn't seem very sanitary. So it's kind of a little bit confusing because I feel like you should be leading by example. Okay, but the paint suit has to be on. Oh, thank you. So where you, do you usually put yours on? My body. No, I, where do you get dressed? Right here? In my bathroom. Oh, do you wear this in the car? You drive to work with it? Well, it's not like you're getting naked and put it on. Put it on right there. OK. Thank you for the coffee. You're welcome. Mm. It's cold, but whatever. How come this one looks different than yours? That is for beginners. This is the more advanced. You got to put the step into it. Hair in, yeah? Yeah, hair has to be in, hood up. There you go, there you go, that's better. That's it. Really, I have to wear this? Well, yeah, because otherwise contaminants come First off First of all, you. why does it leave room for a neck? Why, why what? Well, apparently people who wear these don't have any necks. Well. Or faces. Okay. I'm sorry, Let's it's not it. the hip. I'm ready. Okay, that's cool, Feels awesome. like a lot. Right. Uh, da, 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 da. What? Um, your gloves. You gotta have gloves on. Okay. Thank you. All right. Nice. <laughs> God, you over eat. What? what is it now? You have to make sure everything's appropriate. No, you're not ready. Your little Do weird you flower me? Hawaii Nikes are not gonna work. Oh. You need to go out to the wash bay and get my boots on. Those are very sanitary. They're the tall ones made out of rubber. 
So You're not wearing boots? It's because these have been properly decontaminated. I don't think so. Well, okay, well, Those... wait. Okay, I know what has and what has not. You do not, my friend. So. I'll be back. Yes. I've never seen Will dress like this or anyone dress like this. So, yeah, I, I really want to help and I really want to get in the paint booth and learn how to do some buffing and stuff. So I'll do whatever it takes as long as he teaches me. It's going to take her a little, a little bit to find the, the boots. They're over there in the wash bay, but I wasn't very specific. This should give me enough time to get back to buffing without any interruptions. Despite Will's best efforts to send Alyssa on a wild goose chase, she manages to find the boots in no time. Well, you got the boots, so that makes me happy, but they gotta be on your feet. Okay. Yeah, I asked so much of you. Nice shoes. Oh, thanks. Okay. All right, well, your hair's, not, well, your hair's not tucked in. You can't have hair going everywhere. Jeez. What happened with that fly then? Okay. Okay, you gotta get the mask on. Serious? Well, I don't want contaminants that are coming out your mouth under the car. Oh my gosh. Thanks. You're welcome. Why don't you have one of these on? Because I desanitized before I came in here. <laughs> okay. All right, so you all ready? Yes. All right, so cool. I got the buffing done already. So what? Well, I mean, I think it's a little unfair that I did everything you said, jumped through the hoops, put on this stupid suit, and then it's all done. So, I mean, it's kind of unfair. I feel like he should at least showed me for a second. I mean, come on. Uh, we need to get the whole car unmasked. Okay. So, can, are you help, capable to help me do that? Yeah. So, I mean, it's real simple. You just go up to the paper and remove it. So, we just gotta get, so you can, you can start at the front there if you'd like, anywhere. You can get all the paper off this car. Paper, tape. There's a lot going on here. Why are you dressed like this? I have the white suit on. I feel like this is really restrictive for breathing. Well, it's a respirator. <laughs> it's blowing the hot air right into the bottom of my eyes. I mean, it's ridiculous. We're in this booth. It's like 100 degrees in there. There's no airflow at all. I have on this Michelin Man suit. I mean, it's like 100 degrees in here. It's super hot. And the boots are super big, too. So those are really hard to get around the booth in. <laughs> Alyssa, not everybody in America knows the proper way to unmask a car. So we're educating America on the safeties and precautions that need to be taken. Good. I'm sorry if that, that bothers you. All right, did you get all your tape off? I think so. You think so? Okay, so I'll have you stand here. I'm gonna open up the back of the booth and we're gonna roll this outside now. Okay. Don't let it go sideways. Don't hit the sides of the booth. Just. Just pay attention to what you're doing. Okay. Why are we going outside? Uh, for phase two of your learning. What's phase two? <laughs> well, we got to get there. The boots are like six sizes too big for me, so it's ridiculous. I feel like a duck waddling around in there. What are we doing out here? Phase two. You're going to learn to wash the car. What? Um, I actually did take Will seriously for about three quarters of the way through. Um, then I kind of started figuring out that this was probably more for his amusement than for practical purposes. We have to get all the compound off this car completely. We're just washing it? Yeah. OK, that's easy. It's kind of cold out here, but. You said it was too hot in there. I told you you'd be cool well, now. Well, I could temper it with this thing on. Temper it? Don't say words you can't spell. I hate you. Hate's a strong word. Hey, what, do we, what? What, 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 what are you doing? What? That's his favorite thing to do, is give me a hard time, so. Not really surprised. Okay, so there's this. Don't get too close to. Mm, don't get close, too close to the car. Get the outside of the car done. Make sure there's no compound, like, like in the jams here. You may have to open the door, take the wash mitt, and really scrub that through there. And just get all the compound off it. No, no compound. Okay. So, so you should be good to go. Okay. Okay. With the chargers cleaned up, Mark and Mike assess whether they're worth restoring. Hardly tell anything's wrong with them, really, once you see them out here like this. Right, yeah. 
Once you try picking it up. Or Rear window it. defroster, look at that. Big money there, big money. Probably no good anymore. Well, the bezel is, and the duct is plastic, so that's probably all good. Make that could be rebuilt. Civic. We said that I never built. And it had a window in it, right? Yep, we still have it. So it's possible. No extra charge for the plastic filler. This is the way they used to do it in the olden days. That there's what they call Bondo. Plastic filler, that's right. So it got a steering column, 68, 69 floor shift. What would be the difference between a 70? Why wouldn't a 70 work? Uh, where are the keys looking? There you go. Yep. Went from the dash up to the steering column. Good yep. job, Mickey. All the original hardware looks like it's still pretty much in place. This apron's wasted. Frame rails are all wasted. Engine's probably no good for much more than whatever bolts we can get off of it. Power steering gear core with the re return valve still in good shape on it. Those are usually snapped off. Most of the front end's wasted. The headlight doors may have some use to them, maybe some intricate parts. The vacuum motor's still in there. Yeah, all the stuff's still in there. Yeah, pretty sad old life this one had. All the while, Alyssa continues to wash the Phantom Cuda while its engine is finally ready for primer and paint. So the engine's in the booth, it's all masked up, wiped down, and it's uh, ready to get some paint on it. This is a great opportunity for Alyssa to get in and try to learn to paint. Problem is, is I need the car washed also. So I'm gonna kinda just get this thing done real quick, in and out, before she has any idea that I was actually painting something that she could've helped in. Hey, Did you really just knock? You yeah. and Alyssa both knock. Really? You don't have to knock. We... There's a window, just come in. It's so polite to knock. Anyways. What's happening? Hey, what are you doing? I'm getting ready to spray the DP90 on the Phantom Cuda motor. Oh, cool. Good to see you today. Glad to see you actually show up and come out to my side of the shop. That's a well, first. I want to come out and keep you from working as much as I do the other people. You are what Mark would call counterproductive. So I'm going to go in here and get this painted. Can I watch for a minute? Sure. At least don't Mark catches me. That's fine. You know, you should feel lucky today. Um, I got Alyssa breathing down my back, dying to paint something. And I say, no, we gotta get this car washed. Can you let me paint it? Are you capable? You just wanna jump in there? I will try anything once. Now that you've done successfully done a good job putting the DP90 on, do you feel confident to go in there and put the single stage on? Absolutely. Will a teacher like you? Piece of cake. I feel like this. So yeah, exactly. This one I was noticing didn't flex at all when you had it on the forklift, which no, is which is amazing. Amazing. Is that door open. You can save anything, right? You can save anything, but is it worth it? I think you could probably use this nose. Remember how we had to find one for our General E? Yeah. This would have worked just fine. We would have put a radiator support from AMD. We would have put a left apron on it, and I bet the rest of it would have been fine. And you'd have had it instead of having to knock a car in the head. Rails a little quick on the trigger, if you know what I mean. A little what? Light Good on job. the trigger? No. I, I did not say light on the trigger. Oh, trigger. sorry. Mother. Sorry. It looks great. Turned out great. I mean, he was very careful. Mark's going to be happy with it. It's not going to be. That's all that matters. How's it going? I'm almost done. You're what? I'm almost done. You're almost done? Yeah. Oh. Can I rinse the back off and... I, I thought I'd come out and give you a hand for being a good sport. Yeah. What? Would you like some help or do you got this? It's all right. I'm, uh, I'll help you get this done. We'll get it back in the booth so we can get our things wrapped up on it. Okay. Um, and good. this was all for fun. <laughs> hey, I'll You're remember welcome. this. Well, I, didn't think you were, remember. I didn't think you'd go through with all of it. I wanted Most to people you. would be like, really? You really, I wanted to help you. All right, let's finish. Don't get too close now.
With the Phantom Cuda washed, Mark and Mike come to their final conclusion on the Chargers. So I guess ultimately the way it comes down to me is probably won't end up saving either one, but both of these will contribute vital, vital, vital organs to many of the cars that do deserve to come back. For a back. long time. Yeah, for a long time. Graveyard Cars is known as the company that brings them back from the dead. And so, you know, some people might be sitting there thinking, well, why not these? And, uh, you know, it's, it's multiple answers to that. In this particular case, not a valuable car, no personal emotional attachment to them, uh, not much left of the cars. I mean, really, you'd spend a ton trying to get those cars back on the road again. So my ultimate answer is, let's take the pieces off of them that we need over the next few years and help make other cars, good cars, that do mean something to somebody, that do have a value, that do have a place in this world, that are realistically going to be back on the road again. Let's help them get back on the road with the use of the parts from these cars. All right, good job, buddy. It looks good. Let's get these things moved out to rat row. Uh, I want them to set even like everything else, though. This thing's going to hurt somebody, so let's cut off what we can. And I don't see much there worth saving that you can't buy from AMD. So as far as the front bumper, just get rid of that. Like I say, between the pieces that we can use off of them and the original information that's still set in there, it's well worth it. I think it's well worth and it. And it was a good trip. It was a fun trip. Nice folks, cool place. Hey, careful. Yeah, we'd hate to damage it. Don't you put a dent in that door. Just because they're parts cars doesn't mean they won't be useful to other graveyard cars restorations in the future. With the day's tasks finished, Dave readies his engine on the run stand to get it started for the first time in years. Uh, I got a few things put on, but uh, there's a lot to the engine run stand, I don't know. So uh, I got to get Mike in here, uh, use his expertise, of, you know, putting the rest of the components on the motor and running this engine run stand because I've never done it before. So it's it's great being in the engine room and, and working on a motor. It's cool. Uh, get a chance to work with Mike a little bit on an engine. He comes out and helps me out quite a bit in the assembly room. Uh, so it's kind of nice to come in here and, and have him uh, help me out with my motor and, and get it fired off for the first time. I uh, got a radiator topped off. Oil pressure looked good. We kind of just lit it off for a second in there, rolled it outside. So let's, uh, let's fire this baby up. Got my new radiator hose gravy Good there. Sir. Yeah, it blew the cap out of the thing. Thank you very much. It was the plug. Oh, <laughs> imagine that sucker hitting you in the ball. Oh, God. That's a ball <laughs> shot. <laughs> Yeah. All right, that's fine because bike. you're getting ready to shut that off was anyway. That sound. That kind of freaked me out when I first yeah. heard it. I know, and then water coming. You're like, oh, there goes the hand. That's oh, scary. Man. Something just let go. Oh. We'll do a carb swap on it. That carb is kind of uh, plugging up a little bit. We have issues with it on the vanishing point motor. Uh, so we're going to do a carb swap on it tomorrow and get that cam broken good. Somebody just didn't tighten the clamp, but it it's working great. It was running the right temperature. At 80 pounds of oil pressure. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was good. That might be the highest oil pressure we've had out here. Feels so that's good. a good thing. Yeah. Low power performance, uh, high volume oil pump there. So. And you got a mile yeah. cam in it, you were saying. Yeah, it's it's actually, yeah, it's just a little bit above uh, stock. It's That's what, awesome. what a lot of builders are recommending for this 340. So, yeah, it's, I mean, I was super stoked, you know, the way it ran. Uh, yeah, I'm really happy. So it's, it's always nice to go home on a good note, and that's what I get to do tonight. Also leaving on a good note, the ghouls accomplished a lot this week. Will buffed the Phantom Cuda despite a winged invader. Alyssa learned about proper paint attire and just how far she can trust Will. Royal tried his hand at painting a very special 440 engine. Dave fired up his own 1970 Dodge Swinger 340 engine. Mike and Mark rescued some Dodge Chargers from their all but forgotten gravesite. And Alyssa washed a car. Hey, I didn't say all the accomplishments were equal. 
And now the number's correct. 440 six-pack engine and Phantom Cuda can be brought together for the first time. Look at that. Pretty mama jamba. <laughs> That's good. Oh my God. Look at that though. Wow, look. Fool, look. I I'm trying to stop it from rolling. You got rage issues. I don't, you just called me a fool. I'm we, sorry, I, and I'm trying not to use the F word that much. July 5th, 1981, what were you doing? Not born yet. Not born yet. All right, that's right. Who, right. when did the engine get painted? The engine got painted the... What's Will. What? Will? When did this happen? Uh, you were washing the... <laughs> you were washing the car in their paint scoop. I'm a little butthurt about that. I think that, you know, I should have been the one in there helping, considering I've played along with his stupid joke the whole time. So I definitely have, I have some plans. Will's not gonna get away with this one. It's okay, Royal jumped so in. So you had me out washing the car, and then you were in painting the engine? Royal. You're gonna let Royal paint with you, but not me? No, I'm not gonna get back at Royal. He's fine. But Will, yeah, he's got one coming. Royal was already geared up in his jeans and T-shirt. July 5th. Yes. I was hoping that maybe they would get a little bit more excited uh, with the idea that we're at this milestone and that not only are, are we at this milestone, but now we can see the finish line, that we're close on this car to having it completed. Right there in front of you, you need to appreciate it. You need to understand it because without that car, there's no you too. I can appreciate what my dad was trying to do by bringing us in and kind of showing us, you know, how much, like, how far we've come. If you could put into just a few words what you're feeling right now, the, the emotions that are conjured up inside. Very frustrated. Again, not the Me angle too. I'm going for. Yeah, Actually, enough, yeah. Though. The engine's okay. painted. I dressed up like an idiot, and I didn't get to help. Just a little frustrated, so. Alyssa and I, do you mind if we just put this back? I just wanted you to have a moment. Your anti-moment. You hate the moment. You the want to take the there. moment. You want to get up on a building with the My moment, moment was and you want to hook you your handcuff to it. And you want to jump off onto a great big no. pillow down below. No. 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 And, no. and no. you want to have Murtaugh put a gun in your mouth. <laughs> yeah, I am crazy. The, the moment is when the car's all done, assembled, right? Looking oh, perfect. Okay. And then it rolls over here. Well, bad like, news, what? sports fans. I could be dead by then. Congratulations. Well, ice hearts. The ice heart twins. It's still a great moment, and it's something that, even if you have to force somebody to appreciate something, which is kind of what I had to do today, one day you look back and you say, wow, yeah, that was really cool. It was neat to be able to be a part of. Uh, I think Alyssa is less than enthralled at the idea she got beat out of getting to paint the engine, because I guess Royal got to do the painting on the engine while she was out in her space suit washing a car, which is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. We'll put her together. You know, that's all right. He pulled one over on her. That's, that's, that's life. That is what it is. I got gags that I did back in the 80s that they're still talking about over on Willamette Street, Eugene, so. Big stuff, funny stuff. Locked a kid in a car, he almost died. All right, so let's get this back to the body shop and then we can get it wrapped up and back over here to your father. Okay. And don't crash it. Nope, you're oh, going sideways. You started out 